We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Pat O'Brien. Our guest today, our rock star is Guillaume Gautoreau, right? Yes. How are you today? Very good, thank good you. Good to have you in here. Uh, thank I you. love the name. Guillaume is William, right? It is William in English. Yes. I like that, but let's go with Guillaume. Okay. All right. <laughs> Did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Yes, very, very young. Really? I already started my first business when I was uh, at school, in fact. What was that? I was uh, hiring students to work for <laughs> other big companies because I found out that students were cheaper than adults or right. older people. Did you give them insurance and everything? <laughs> uh, at the time, it was a bit different. <laughs> a little different, right? What was your worst, worst job ever? My worst job? Worst, yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I think it's... We've well, all had them, come on. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I think it was like right out of school. Uh, because I wanted to start my own business, but I didn't know where to start yet, so I had to take a job. Mm. And uh, I work for a pet food company. Um, and uh, Stop. I get it. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> um, what, you know, a lot of people say they always wanted to be an entrepreneur. What was it? Did you have a mom or a dad who was in the business, or a grandfather? Or? My grandfather. My mm. parents were not. In fact, they worked for the government. Mm -hmm. uh, but my grandfather was an entrepreneur. He studied mm. many business in his life. What did you learn from him? Uh, perseverance and passion. Mm -hmm. He was a very passionate man. He's still, he's 95, still very passionate. All right, well, you could be 95, you could be 96 and be passionate. <laughs> yes. And that's what you're doing. You're trying to help others be passionate about their work. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. How many hours do you work a day? Oh, um, 15, 16. Yeah. The 9 to 5 thing. Doesn't yes, anymore, doesn't does exist. It? Yes, yeah. Yeah. even when I was in France, you know, they say we work less there, but it was not like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a work-life balance? You married, kids, and yeah. uh, not married, but definitely a big work-life balance because this is what I sell mm -hmm. uh, a service. So I, I spend a lot of time meditation, mindfulness practices, and balancing my days. Mm -hmm. How long do you meditate? Uh, every morning for thirty minutes, and every evening for like twenty thirty minutes. Somebody tried to tell me they meditated for two hours a day once, and I just said, you know what, this interview is, you're lying. <laughs> so, they say you should meditate one hour, but if you don't have time, you should meditate two hours. Really? Yes. Because apparently it, gives, it does give more time, because you're more present when you walk. Right. So. Well, I, I meditate, but when I first started, it was one, where's my iPhone, two, you know, I, I couldn't get <laughs> stuff out of my head. Um, what would describe you as an entrepreneur? What's the one adjective? Uh, to me, it's passion. I think mm -hmm. that's the most important things in life, not only as an entrepreneur. I think if you just love what you do, it's going to be okay. But as, as an entrepreneur, it's so hard to pull a company out of the ground, to do that every day. If you don't have a passion for it, for what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard to get to the finish line. And passion is also freedom. You know, once you have passion, you have freedom to kind of enjoy your life, right? Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're walking 18 hours a day. Well, how'd you come up with this idea again? I went through the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, I was very successful, but I was not very happy. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I never really put in the equation of success, happiness and life purpose. Or maybe happiness was there, but my life purpose was not really there. Mm -hmm. I thought I could figure everything with my head, but there was a voice in my heart and I didn't know what it was. Is there somebody besides your grandfather who would be your favorite mentor or your favorite entrepreneur? Oh, my favorite entrepreneur. Um, I think Bronson uh, from you know, Virgin Company mm -hmm. was one of my you know, entrepreneurs or CEO that I was looking upon when I was younger uh, because I think he was very creative. He liked to take risks and he didn't care about what other people think. And he did not care so. <laughs> what people think. So it wasn't just the plane and the island, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the CDs and the music and just everything. Now, in, in your job, uh, you know, do, you, do you rely on other people for uh, advice or are you a micromanager? No, I do rely a lot on other people. I think when you hire people in your team, you know, it's because you believe they have the skills for it. So if you micromanage them, why are you paying them? <laughs> so. We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. This is Business Rockstars. He is Guillaume Gatonor and the head CEO of the Gotaro Group. And um, do you know, uh, how many employees do you have? Uh, 15 uh, consultants and employees. How do you hire them? What do you look for? Uh, I look for people that 
I try to understand their passion, their life purpose, and mm. see if it's aligned with what we're doing, our visions, our values. Because if you don't do that, people just quit at some point, you know? Have you ever, how about friends and family? Uh, I Nobody's ever said yes. I uh, usually avoid, yes. Right. I want to keep my friend close, you know, and not. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I think, you know, I do Boundaries. work sometimes with some friends, but you don't want to lose a friendship. And sometimes in business, you have to make tough decisions, and you don't want to lose a friendship for that. Well, firing somebody, that. Yeah, for example, and, and yeah. the, the friendship. Tell someone, you know, it's hard truth. Sometimes it's not easy when it's a friend. You might not tell exactly what you think. You might be more careful. Did you do business in France as well as here? Yes, I did, and, yeah. How is it different? Uh, it's very different. I think I like the American way of being very direct and efficient and effective. I think the French spends more time talking and discussing, and mm. the meetings can go longer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's known from the French people, so I really like it here. Um, how do you keep learning and growing in your, and we'll get to your business in the next segment, but how do you stay above it all? I think uh, every day you learn something by you know, reading articles, reading the business press, looking at example of entrepreneur failures or success. There's not one day that passed where I don't feel I haven't learned anything. In fact, it's a practice every night I go to bed and I review what I learned during the day always. Mm -hmm. What have you learned so far today? Today, uh, I learned how to sit myself here the right way with the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good lesson that's if you're going to be on lesson. TV. Um, your management style is what? Laid back? Uh... Yeah, laid back, but I think also demanding. Like you need to put people high goals and high bars, but also show them the path to reach them, to reach success. So they think it's possible and they see it's possible, but they go a bit beyond their mm -hmm. boundaries. I can't imagine that you'd be feared as a CEO. Are you loved or feared though? Mm, you know, I think some people, they say when they don't know me, I'm a bit feared, but mm -hmm. I think I'm an easygoing guy once they know me. And how is that tested? Well, I think I ask people when they leave or quit, why is they quitting or leaving? <laughs> and you find <laughs> out right away, Sometimes they tell right? you the truth, yes. You have a favorite superhero? A favorite superhero? Uh, Iron Man. Ah, there you go. Got the cars, the money, the strength, and yes, that suit. Yes, yes. Right? I've, I've actually put that suit on, it weighs a ton. Um, why Iron Man? Uh, because I think there's something, especially in the latest one, you can see about his sensitivity, sensibility, mm -hmm. and he's vulnerable, despite he's like the super powerful one, and he's playing a little bit the tough guys, you know, and all of that. And he's uh, vulnerable, you're right. He's yeah. vulnerable, and he's living alone, you know, there is a suffering in him a little bit. There's something about him, like, you know, he's disconnected from everyone, because even if he loves social, like, uh, meetings and all of that, he lives alone in his big house. So there's something about him. Um, are there any uh, uh, suggestions or pieces of advice you give to an entrepreneur, a budding entrepreneur? Yes, always I tell them, uh, make sure you're not doing that for the money, but for really what you want to deliver in your life. What, what is your life purpose? What is your passion? If you're just doing it for money, Entrepreneur is not the path for it. You might make a lot of money, but you might not, so you might be disappointed. You know, never do anything for the money. That's I've true. I've done it a couple times, it didn't work. Yes. And, and uh, it, it works sh uh, short term. Very short term, yes. But then. All bye -bye. that troubles come, yes. Right. <laughs> um, so, other than your grandfather, uh, is there one guy besides Br uh, Branson? Steve Jobs, maybe, or some other. Yeah, I think Steve Jobs, I mean, he's a very creative guy, but I think also, you know, he was known to not be maybe that easy and, uh, <laughs> you know, and his balance of personal life, work-life balance is not something that he was really good at, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning, maybe at, at the end of his life when he was sick. So I never admired that in him. I always thought there was some kind of trouble there and it cannot seem just as like a beaming light for entrepreneurs, even if on the creative side, obviously, up. Right. Bit. How long could you be without your iPhone? Um, when I sleep or when I'm awake? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anytime. Um, I think, you know, I do days uh, it's where okay, I'm It's okay, by the way, I, I like the word five minutes. But yeah, five minutes when I walk, but I do days when I disconnect fully, uh, like on weekends sometime, or even like days where I say, you know what, today is a no electronic days, no email, no phone, so I can focus on going into like some deep projects. Right. Don't you feel like you're missing out on things? When I'm not on my iPhone? Yeah. Yes, I mean, it means connection to the world very often because mm -hmm. that's how you get most of your connection today. And how do you juggle the time frame from, Fr I assume you have clients in France, mm -hmm. how do you juggle that 10-hour time frame? Oh, 
80% of my clients are here in America. So I've only like a small percentage of client in France. Uh, so I do the calls in the morning, you know. Yeah. Where do you go on vacation? Uh, next vacation, Malaga, Spain. Nice. South of Spain right. for the new year. How about the south of France? It's nice, but I'm from there. I'm from Corsica. So I used to go every year and I still go. I was there like a month ago. Um, well, let's go after the show because I could do use a vacation right now. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. We are here to inspire and form a connected community of entrepreneurs. This is Business Rockstars back in a second. We are here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. I'm Pat O'Brien. This is Business Rockstars. Guillaume Gattaro yes. is our guest. Tell me about your company. So Godard Group was founded uh, two years ago to help CEOs, entrepreneurs, and people get balance back in their life. Mm. I met a lot of people that were very successful, but not very happy. And that's what inspired me to start this business. Also because personally, I went through the same thing. Mm. What happened to you? I had a very big business in New York City. I started a company and we went to 200 employees, raised over $50 million. And the more my company was growing, the less I was happy. I had a very dysfunctional personal life. I was, you know, going out a lot. I was, you know, drinking and all that. And I was like, how come success doesn't bring me happiness? And at some point, I quit everything, completely changed my life and realized, you know, because I was never seeking happiness, I was seeking success. And there was a disconnect there. And then I realized, oh, many CEOs and entrepreneurs and successful people are living the exact same thing. So I started to offer services to help people refine their balance like I find for myself. And how, um, and I love this, how, how, uh, how do they come to you or do you go to them? In other they, words, the initial meeting, do they, come they search to me. you out? Yeah, they come to me, yes. They, because I, I have a blog and podcast. And how do so, they find you? They find me online. They hear about my story. I have give a lot of public speaking and they're like, oh, can you help me? And what's your uh, website? Uh, GoToRollGroup.com. <laughs> Common spelling on GoToRoll, yeah, right? You can write it. Okay, <laughs> just figure it out. Um, what's the main thing that they're looking for? Happiness, yes, but on the way there. I think the main common thread is people that are late in their career already and realize they don't know what their life purpose is. Mm -hmm. So they might have done a great career and say, you know, I really like what I did, but I'm not sure it's what I was supposed to be doing. There maybe there's something else. They have something in their heart and they don't know how to listen to it. So mm -hmm. that's really what I'm helping them find out. Without mentioning names, what, what level of CEOs do you deal with? Uh, some people in like- Big corporations, are they? Yeah, know? some people have, you know, 20,000 employees, let's say, mm -hmm. so pretty large corporation. And I have also young entrepreneurs, in fact, that have started company four or five years before, first job, and they realize it's not at all what I thought. Right. Well, that's true. I mean, and, and mindfulness has uh, become sort of the empowerment tool for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, is it like, do they try to uh, come in anonymously? Is it like yes, mindfulness I anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I think a lot of people are not very vulnerable when you're a very powerful man in your career and a very well-known man. Uh, you don't want your friends or even sometimes your business network to know that maybe you're struggling in your personal life or you're struggling with anxiety or with stress or even with addiction sometimes. So it's, yeah, a lot of time. I mean, it's always confidential in many right. ways. So are you cheaper than a shrink? Uh, yeah, I'm not a shrink. So <laughs> I don't I'm give just <laughs> I don't know. I think, you know, a lot of the time when you give those tools to people, you empower them. So I feel as a coach, my goal is not to get them with me for two years or three years, is to give them the tools so within four or five months, they can really shift the way they see themselves. Mm -hmm. So what are the kinds of points you give them? I mean, one, you got to tell them to look at themselves. And this is impossible work if they're not honest with you, right? They have to be. So mm -hmm. the first things we do is creating a, what we call a sacred space, a safe space. So they know that when we meet, whatever is happening there is going to be confidential and hold there. 
and there's no judgment of my, on my side. I'm really here to hold them. And very often it's the first time that they can talk about something very personal and they're not judged. Because even your friends, you know, you might think, oh, what are they going to think? So just offering that some time, allow them to remove a lot of weight from their shoulders and to put it there. And it's the first step into healing. Right. Well, people carry around baggage all the time, you know, and, and they've just got to unpack that baggage backpack. Uh, so give me the steps that you get them to this. Because I'm sure it's foreign to a lot of CEOs uh, to, to A, be nice. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean that in a, in a bad way, but they've just never been nice. Mm -hmm. And there's always a CEO thread of, I'm, you know, stronger than you. Uh, but that doesn't matter, right? They can be stronger than you, but the, you can also be a human being about it, right? Yes, and the problem with that idea that we need to be strong and a little bit above others doesn't work anymore for the new generation, Y and Z. They don't want to work for companies where they see the CEO or the boss that someone that's diminishing them. Yeah. They want to be felt as equal. And a lot of, in fact, companies I have one client I'm thinking about has hired me mainly because they can't hire young people because they feel their company looks too old and the CEOs and the executives don't represent who they are. And so how do you shift that when your company has been around for 100 years and you have tens of thousands of employees? So the CEO needs to embody those new values and he needs to see that by coming at the level of the younger people, by managing from the heart, he's not going to diminish his power, but on the contrary, he's going to inspire people to join, inspire what? people to work more hours. What's the number one issue you have in trying to transform people? I think it's that... Is that right? Transform? Trying to change their attitudes? Yes, so. shift the way they right. perceive themselves. I think the biggest one is because of culture and what we learn at business school and what we're hearing everywhere is that perception about being tough mm -hmm. and that a leader needs to be that person that's strong. Mm -hmm. And you see it, you know, in politics, you see it in CEOs, you see it at home <coughs> maybe, you see it everywhere. So it's hard to shift that it's not working that way. People have been brought up through business schools is that if you're a leader, you've got to be strong and alone and close the door of your office. Now, do you see more open openness now among CEOs? Yes, more and more. I think uh, the internet companies have studied that, you know, open space, like more de democratic like this, space, here, yeah. yes. Uh, but it's coming more and more. CEOs realize that there is no other way around today uh, in the world of today. It's changing too fast that alone, if they are alone in it, they can't face those changes. They need everybody involved there. And so they see it's good business to do that. Do you have a, a step program, like a 12, you know, in AA, there's a 12 step program. Yeah, yeah which is a great program. Uh, which I've been in for eight years. So it has steps that you use. You know, you have to admit, mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge that there's something wrong and all that. Do you have the same kind of program? Yeah, where same come from. And it's very inspired by AA and all their old spiritual practices that are very ancient and have shown that they worked. And so you take Eastern uh, philosophy and put it in your a lot, presentation? Yes, a lot of Eastern philosophy in it. Uh, Dalai Lama? Yeah, Dalai Lama, Indian scriptures, you know, Hinduism, Advaita Vedanta, which are, you know, four, five thousand year old scriptures that have proven to transform and help people. All right. Uh, how many people have you actually transformed? I don't know. You've helped all of them, I'm sure. But yes, I think you know, a year, you know, it's probably around 60 to 70 people mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. But those people, that's what drives me, touch maybe thousands of people. So really, when we transform one, one leaders, we transform all the people he touched. Right. So there's a ripple effect there. So a CEO comes to you, you set up, um, you do this indoors, outdoors, at their business, yeah, it's a over good, coffee, you know, how does it work? Good question. Usually I try to take them out of the office, mm -hmm. uh, outdoors if possible, in the park uh, when I'm in New York, when it's summer. Uh, so we have uh, nurturing environments around, but sometimes it's not always possible, so it's in their office. I like to tell people, and I do some of this work too, um, to find milestones and then figure out where you were the last time that milestone came by. Mm -hmm. And it really helps them say, oh God, I didn't do anything since that last one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, goals are very important. Uh, one of the tools I use with my client is to have daily goals, weekly, monthly, mm -hmm. annual goals. Because if not, you're just floating a little bit around. Right. So you need those big vision goals. Even if sometimes you don't reach them, and that's fine, but you need a direction. Jean, I feel better already. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. We are here to inspire, inform, and connect the community of entrepreneurs. This has been Business Rockstars. Au revoir.